Welcome back to Sports Zone. This is our NFL segment going for two. I'm joined alongside by Cam and Dan. Lots to talk about in week five in the NFL. We're going to start with the good, I guess, and maybe some history setting, if you will. Tom Brady on Thursday Night Football against the Indianapolis Colts in Foxborough, becoming the third quarterback in NFL history to eclipse 500 touchdowns. Drew Brees also active still nipping on his heels, but Tom Brady joining the 500 club with Peyton Manning and Brett Favre. Cam, let's start with you. Talk about what a career Tom Brady's had. Now another milestone for him. Yeah, I've got to say it's truly incredible what this man's able to accomplish, especially 42. Yeah. 42, and he's he still looks like he's still going. It must be in the diet. I don't, I don't know what it is, but as long as he can keep playing and putting up numbers for the Patriots, there really is no bar for how far he can go. But... One downside is first half unstoppable. Second half, a little bit of a falter by the Patriots. Um, Colts seemed like they started to turn things around. It was a much closer second half than it was in the first half. But they were still able to overcome maybe that veteran presence, able to push past. And Drew Brees, what else can you say about the man? He's been down his whole life. He's not really had many rosters behind him, but he's still been able to go out there and produce. Even when... um, he was originally with the Chargers, got pushed out with that shoulder injury. He's always been said that he's too short for the NFL, but then he just goes out and shows everyone wrong, and then he goes out and he really earned this record. Yeah, and Drew Brees, now the all-time passing leader, eclipsing Brett Favre with over 7,000 passing yards in his career, and Tom Brady as well. It must be something in the TB12 lifestyle diet that he keeps preaching. We've heard 10 years from Brady, 5 years from Brady. At this point, who knows? You know, personally, as a Jets fan, I need to see him gone like this year. <laughs> I'm a but Dolphins fan. That's too, so that's I agree. I'm that's sorry. me. That's neither here nor there. But swinging to some active teams and teams now that are still undefeated, you have the Kansas City Chiefs picking up their fifth win of the season behind Patrick Mahomes. Uh, so, Dan, what's going on with Kansas City? I know we've seen some hot starts from them in the past, but do they sustain this now? You know, I think they do. I think they're going to be a top two seed in the AFC. Uh, it's going to be a huge game between the Patriots and the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes, who's been the MVP candidate this year, has gone to Foxborough in a tough environment. Um, I think it could decide who's going to get the one seed, which could be important down the line, as we know how hostile the Chiefs' crowd is. Um, I think, honestly, the Chiefs aren't quite ready to take that next step right now. Yeah, they're 5-0, and but... We're talking about a team that's defense is very iffy. They traded away their best corner to the Los Angeles Rams. That sure didn't help. They give up a lot of points. Yeah, they did well against Jacksonville, but you know, you're you're playing at home against Blake Bortles. You know, you you expect them to only score 14 points against you. So I think it's gonna be a big test when they play some elite quarterbacks to see how this defense can fare. Um, in order to really determine whether or not this Kansas City team is going to do anything in the playoffs this year. And now we're going to see it for sure this week on Sunday Night Football. The Kansas City Chiefs going to New England to take on Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. But now going out west, you had the L.A. Rams with a little bit of a nail-biter against the Seattle Seahawks in the 12th man, but picking up their fifth win of the season. Cam, going to you, we've seen how dominant that the LA Rams are and seem to be the most complete team girly in the backfield got with so many weapons to throw the ball to and that defense you have Donald Sue you know Marcus Peters in the secondary like are the Rams for real this year I have to say as a Seahawks fan I was very excited to see them be competitive in any capacity but um I have to say the injuries are starting to show on the Rams and I think that's what really showed through against the Seahawks because from a fan, the Seahawks are not ready to face a team like what the Rams are supposed to be. And so the fact that that game was close really showed that they are missing a keep to leave at corner because Russell Wilson has no one to throw to, so I don't know who was catching those passes. And I really think the Rams, if they're going to compete with teams like the Chiefs, they need to get their roster healthy and make sure everyone's available on the field. Otherwise, I don't know if just the combo of Goff and Gurley and Stroman – or. Pfft, Peters on defense would be enough to keep them competitive against an offense like the Chiefs. It should be very interesting to see now, kind of as we starting to move into the second quarter of the season, if you will. But speaking of now moving and kind of well into the second quarter of the season, we've seen a lot of shortcomings, especially in the kicking game this year in the NFL. We've seen, and I mean we've seen a lot, Mason Crosby missing four 
field goals. Aaron Rodgers just visibly disgusted on the sidelines with that. You have kickers that can't reliably hit from 50 yards. But, you know, so, Dan, I'm going to go to you on this. We've seen a lot of inconsistency with kicking this year. Do you think teams are going to start thinking twice on fourth down, especially with a longer 40, maybe even a 50-yard field goal? Oh, yeah. I mean, we've been seeing a lot of coaches around the league who have been really gutsy, you know. Um, I mean, for example, uh, like the game we just talked about, yeah, they weren't in the field goal range, the Rams, but on their own side of the field, they went for it on fourth and one to clinch the game. Um, But, yeah, I mean, I think it really depends on – what kicker you have on those situations. When you got a guy like Justin Tucker for the Ravens and Joe Flacco at quarterback, you're going to want to get the three points, right? But with Mason Crosby, you know, missing four kicks and it's fourth and one at the 35 or 30, and you got Aaron Rodgers in the backfield throwing footballs, um, you know, I think if you're McCarthy, you go for it in those situations looking forward. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it'll be very interesting to see as we kind of move along this season, especially with such inconsistency in the kicking game. Greg Zerline from the Rams hurt, now giving way to Sam Ficken from Penn State. Obviously, the kicking game not as consistent there. Zerline pretty much always automatic, kind of like Justin Tucker. But now swinging to some other teams and other uh, other games this year. The Cleveland Browns have won two games in an NFL season. Who would have thought? The Cleveland Browns have won two games now with Baker Mayfield at the helm. Cam, I know it's early to say that are they going to contend for the division because I think that's a lofty expectation. But are the Browns finally turning it around as a team? Well, regardless of whatever fan you are, it feels good deep down inside to see the Browns do well in anything. Um, But I have to say, the, the games that they're losing, even the games they're losing, they're still close. So you have to look and see that there's there's something going on there. Whether the offense is starting to click more now that Baker's at the helm, or the, you know the defense is starting to get a little more, get a little more chiseled, starting to put everything together. But I really think that it's it's really early to say, and especially with the Browns' track record, it's difficult to make a prediction such as this. But if they can remain close in the rest of the games this season, like they've done so far, they could definitely make a run. It could be very interesting. Baker Mayfield and Denzel Ward, their top two of their top five picks this year, really panning out in the Browns leading the way in turnovers in the NFL this season, which is a stat I don't think any of the three of us could have ever imagined saying out loud, but the Cleveland Browns are currently leading the NFL in turnovers. But now swinging to week six, moving along in the season, we obviously have some big matchups, but we're going to go to each one of you guys. Dan, let's start with you. What is your matchup to watch week six? As I mentioned earlier, Patriots, Chiefs. You've got Tom Brady, arguably the GOAT, against... The front runner for MVP. I mean, what else can you ask for? These are the two best teams in the AFC, in my opinion. Um, and we get to really see what the Chiefs are all about. This is going to be a tough road game. Um, Mahomes, you know, he had a tough road game against the Denver Broncos, and that's a good defense. But now we're going to see possibly added pressure on him because the Patriots are, you know, the Goliath of the NFL. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see how those two quarterbacks play. Cam? I have to agree. I really do think the Patriots-Chiefs is the matchup of the week because we're looking at two teams who uh, you talked about it a bit earlier, Dan, but Chiefs, I believe, are currently rigged last in total defense. So I feel like the Patriots will be the first true test of elite quarterback versus upcoming elite quarterback to really see who can win the shootout, basically, because Patriots defense also has had its question marks throughout the year. I'd have to agree with you. Sunday night football, all the lights, all the attention – on Pat Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. We saw them do well at home against Jacksonville, a very reputable defense, but now you're playing against an offense that can keep up with yours. So I think, however, Kansas City pulls this one out 38-35. I think it's going to be a shootout in Foxborough. I think it'll be very interesting, but granted, now that I just said it, Andy Reid is going to find a way to fail me. Just seems to be my luck. But anyway, that's all the time we have for this edition of Going for Two. More Sports Zone coming to you after this.